because in those days the circuits also were very dangerous and very unforgiving, very different from, from nowadays. Probably 70-80% of the circuits we used to race on were pure out-and-out -out road circuits and a road circuit, you know, you've got telegraph poles, brick walls, concrete barriers, you, you, there is nothing, there's no give in those. So it's, it's amazing that he did as well as he did with as little experience as he had. And the race circuits were, were, to say that they were dangerous is an understatement. They were ridiculous, you know. When it, we've been to a couple of them um, after I stopped racing, about 10, 10 years later, and drove around with a car in, in Yugoslavia, in, uh, town, it's not Yugoslavia anymore, but anyway, and I thought, we must have been crazy, you know. There were no way that you could, if you had an accident, that you'd stand up again, you know. And uh, even at this circuit in Silverstone, although it was a, uh, a race circuit, good compared with a normal road circuit, the safety features were terrible as well. You know. and there wasn't anything at all. There were no, not even straw bales at that time or anything. Uh, we used to laugh about it when the people stayed on the on the edge of the roads that uh, they were softer than trees. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, silly to even think about it that way. So, but it was really like what it was like. You know, and um, you had to learn not to crash because it wasn't as if you'd crash and and, uh, and get up. You'd have to have a lot of luck to get up and not hurt yourself. And uh, the expenses were too, you just couldn't um, afford to crash as well, you know. We used to, didn't even train in those times. You know, we, when we used to get on the bike after the season start, the first time that, that I used to race was the first training for the first race. No one had any money to go training anywhere in, in the south of France or anything and that sort of thing, you know. It just was unbelievable. And Kim was the same. There's no way where he could race or to train this thing, you know, anywhere in, in Berlin. So he went with the bike to the first race. And uh, normally, mm. when you think how they go in the modern times now, that they, when they develop a bike, then they, they spend a year developing on a race circuit without racing it. And he took the bike, built the bike, went to the races, and that was it, you know. Uh, some of the circuits, for example, um, Spa, Francochamps had an average speed. I got pole position there on 1978, the last time we used the classic circuit, at an average speed of 205 kilometers per hour on a 250. Now that's that's awesome fast. The 500s were averaging closer to 240, if not more, average lap speed. So um, and that that's on a circuit with with three meters of of grass and then. One, one straw bale on a steel barrier. On the, that, those kind of speeds, that was crazy stuff. Um, so, so, terribly exciting. That was one of, one of the most exciting things I ever did was, was get pole position for that, that event. And I had a, an intense respect for that circuit. It was a, a, an exercise in precision that the modern rider wouldn't even comprehend to, to get around that 205 k's per hour. Uh, with without with mostly fast corners, not too many actually straights. You know, it wasn't like it was a straight, a straight, straight connected by corners. It was a bunch of series of corners going through through the uh, the forest, the um, Ardennes. Beautiful, beautiful facility. Very exciting. A huge challenge, but it was right that it was shut down. I actually enjoyed riding there on a two fifty only. But it, it was right that it was it was stopped. I think I think motorcycle racing changed when the Americans came over. Um, the Americans, uh, the first one to come over was Kenny Roberts Jr., and he came over in the late seventies, and he was appalled at what he saw. The circuits were so dangerous, and um, he just got a movement going to say you know we can't race on these type of circuits um you know, we've got to have better facilities and so on and the result of that of that was that the circuits had to spend more more money they had to see more of an in, more of a return on their money 
um, motorcycle sales in general throughout the world were going up and everything had to become more professional from those those old days. I mean, we were our racing in the 70s was very professional compared to the era before the 60s and the 50s where they used to put their bikes on the trains in the 50s. They used to put their bikes on the trains to go to the meetings. Um, and, uh, you know, we thought we were really uh, um, large because we had we had caravans to live in. And nowadays you go to the circuits and they've got 40, 50 foot motorhomes and it's it's all changing. It's just it's just life and and the world in general changes and, and things had to change. There were there were a lot of riders in those era, unfortunately, that lost their lives racing. And I, and I can look back now in 2004 and, and, and say, you know, I was very lucky to have got away with racing in that period uh, and still be here with two arms and two legs. There are a lot of people that, that aren't around anymore uh, that were racing on those circuits. So I suppose that's that's the reason it's changed so much I suppose everyone looks back on their era and think that they've had the best era I think we had the best era I've no doubt that Mike Haywood or Stanley Woods throughout the, the generations will look back and said they've had the best year and the same with Valentino Rossi now I find him absolutely fascinating I think he is absolutely unbelievable what he can do with a bike and as a former racer I can really appreciate it and I love Italian people I love the passion of when he saw when he won in in South Africa this year he got off the bike and he kissed the bike that to me epitomizes an Italian a, a, a hot-blooded Italian and, and I love that I think that's absolutely great but I don't like the way motorcycle racing has gone now. I think the bikes are just monsters. I just would, I'd like to ride one just to see what it's like, but I wouldn't want to race one. I think they're so dangerous. But I suppose he'll look at the year. I mean, I raced with Valentino's dad, um, Graziano Rossi. He was a good Grand Prix rider in my era. And the, the, Valentino will look back and say, oh, God, I wouldn't have ridden dad's bike. It would have been, oh, not for me.